All right, I have an update on an e-bike battery that I had made a video on. These are the only ones that supposedly, according to our supplier, they're unused. And when you go and check them, uh, they do look better than all the other ones. Uh, most of the, our e-bike batteries that we got uh, in different loads, uh, they, sh they show some signs of, of wear, right? They've been on a bike before, they have stickers, sometimes they have like customers like names on them so like they return them because they couldn't figure out how to use them I, who knows there's many reasons uh why they ended up uh in our hands and a lot of the times it's because they have issues you know sometimes it's a bad connector sometimes their cells are loose inside sometimes they will need a bms uh and i'm sure some of them will have bad cells or something like that right but out of the whole lots all the lots that we've gotten, there's this one, the R4 battery. By the way, it's not R4, that's just our denomination, just because we don't know anything about e-bike batteries. And so we just, my guys just started naming them as they were coming in and they were listing them. Um, this particular battery is claimed to be unused. And when we're looking at them, they're like, oh yeah, these look pretty clean. You know, they have signs that maybe they were in a pallet and you know, we, you know, handling and stuff, but they don't, the connectors, the buttons look new. Uh, and uh, I made a video about them. They have very good cells. They have uh, E35, Samsung E35 cells. So they're pretty compact. They're 672 watt hours, but it's a small little pack and stuff. And the only thing that was missing is how to wake it up because uh, when I did the video, I couldn't get it to spit out you know, power, right? So even though it's on, the, you click them on and the light turns green. So the, the, they have charge, but it almost seems like it needed some kind of signal from the e-bike to be able to wake them up. Well, I posted that video probably a week, two weeks ago or something like that. And then you guys have been posting comments on that video and I read them. Okay, so here's what the battery looks like, right? This is the R4, it's on our website there. We're selling it for $149, it's like a $300 battery. Uh, a replacement one. This is a genuine one uh, from the manufacturer or whoever, and they seem to, for some reason, be unused, right? So let me show you in our YouTube channel. Okay, so here is the video from two weeks ago. R4 battery has Samsung 35E cells, and its replacement is $300. That's what I named the title. Um, anyways, uh, the comments here I, Mike Lees, two days ago posted, I received mine and found out that if you connect B to negative and connect A to positive, you can turn it on and pull power from the connections. Uh, have to stay on connected the whole time. So a lot of people had said, well, you need to short out all the other cables, the data cables. And I tried all of that and none of this worked. Well, I tried this. I, Mike Lees, thank you for posting that. That does seem to work. Let me show it to you on the bench here. All right, so on the first one right here, this is the one that I took apart. This is the one here, the original one that I took apart and uh, I took and cut the wires just so I could test it because it's got that weird connector that I didn't have the thing, right? So when, here's where we were at last time, we plug in our little meter and just there's no power. When you measure using your multimeter, it does measure voltage. But when you actually put a load, it doesn't work, which means that it's a phantom. Load. It's a phantom voltage, right? It's just it's just leakage from the the BMS uh, trans transistors, right? But look, I made this little cable, and then when you connect this in here, it essentially does that. It connects the a to the to the positive and the b to the negative the b to the negative the a to the b is the black one here and the a is the yellow and so we're going to connect the black to the negative and the yellow to the positive right so as soon as you do that boom now we have power and now uh, you can use this battery for any DIY project, not just for what it was intended for, 
right? Now this is a working pack. Now, I wanted to check to see that this wasn't a fluke. Even though, I mean, you know, if you guys posted that, then uh, that means it works, right? So I got a second battery. I went and grabbed another one from Palette. And then, you know, these are the ones that they, they light up. All of these ones are very nice. They're not beat up. They don't seem to be uh, corroded. They they look genuinely, they look un, unused, right? So here is where this connector comes in, right? This is the only, the other, the only thing that we're going to have to figure out is if you're going to use it for a DIY project, you have to figure out how to get one of these connectors or maybe do the same thing that I did here, take it apart, put XT. 30 connectors, XT90 connectors, XT60 connectors. These are commonly used connectors, right? But so let's do that. The B is on this side. So I basically have to connect this one to that one and then this one to that one. So I just made little cables here that you can just stick in here. So the positive is right there. And the negative is right here. Okay. Okay, so you guys see what I did there, right? I just basically used two cables to uh, jump the center pins to the outer pins. The B to the negative, the A to the positive. And now let's connect our little meter. Does that change the light? No, it doesn't change the light. And now we connect our meter here. Boom, look at that, we got power. Okay, let's try a load on it, just for fun. Okay, so here's our test setup. I have uh, connected this battery through this little meter here. Um, by the way, a few of you guys have asked where what is this and where you can get it i'll put a link on the description but it's connected to this which is a grid tie inverter this will make the 52 volts that are here or the 48 volts nominal right into 110 and then if you just connect this is just the grid this is just the plug that goes into a extension cord and then it goes into a plug in this building right so when i plug this in it's going to convert that energy from the battery right into the grid. This is a grid tie inverter. And so um, this, just, this is like, this is a solar thing. It's made for batteries, but also for solar panels. You put them in here and it converts that energy into, into the grid. So I think what it's gonna do is gonna try to put about 30 um, amps load onto so we'll see if this battery can support that kind of load. Okay, here we go. 20 amps. Oh my God, those, those little cables that I put there might not be up to the task. Okay, so it's, uh, it's at 23 amps. Yeah, those, you know, I don't have a proper connection there so i'm not gonna run this too long because pretty sure that's gonna get hot it's just a cable just jammed into that little thing there right okay yeah let's stop this okay so this battery does um 23 amps can we push it see did that get hot okay so i just changed the settings now I should try to pull Oh no, it's still 22, 900. Well, it's only a thousand uh, watt inverter, so there you go. I guess I thought I thought it was, if it goes lower, the voltage, when the voltage goes lower, then the amperage is gonna go higher. But right now the highest that it'll pull is uh, 23. So there you go, this is a 20, probably a 25 amp uh, battery pack. I'm gonna disconnect it because again, I don't have a proper connection there. If I had this thing or in this one, um, I would charge this one and then use it like that. But uh, there you go. This is how 
you use the R4 batteries. Uh, yeah, or whatever this type of battery that is made for bikes out there. If you have this bike, then these are plug and play, right? You just buy them and then you install it in your bike and it works. But if you're doing a DIY project, a DIY e-bike, or you wanna do something like this, like, uh, you know, charge one of your EcoFlows or all kinds of different things, build your own custom scooter or who knows, all kinds of things, right? Um, this is how you wake them up. You have to short out those cables. All right, thank you for watching this video. It's just an update. Um, I knew that I'm always happy when we can figure some of these batteries out and then just make it easier for people to use them because then that that's better, right? Then then that's, they become more valuable for everyone, these batteries. So of course, if you're interested in that, go to jackter5.com. We have a whole line of batteries that we're selling there and very, uh, very affordable prices. Uh, all of these I'm listing them for around less than, a, like slightly less than $100 a kilowatt hour, which is crazy, crazy, crazy prices uh, on lithium batteries. All right, thank you for your support. We'll see you guys on the next one, bye.